I would say the simplest answer is they're looking for somebody who can verbalize how to apply concepts, how to apply knowledge into a clinical setting. And at least from my perspective, I'm not going to ask anything about anesthesia because the people we're interviewing, they haven't learned anesthesia yet. So that's not fair. But I think asking questions about the ICU is completely fair game because that's the environment that they work in. And we want to see that they can take the the different concepts of, of ICU or clinical ICU um, and, and that they can apply that into a setting, into a scenario or a question. Hello, future CRNA. I have some exciting news to share with you today. We have just released the Nurse Anesthesia Educators Unplugged, which is going to be your gateway to success. I want you to discover the inside scoop. I want you to be able to navigate the complexities of CRNA admissions and thrive as a candidate and, and as a nurse anesthesia resident, which can seem like a really daunting task. But what if you had a trusted guide at your fingertips? which is why we're excited to introduce the Nurse Anesthesia Educators Unplugged, which is CSBA's private podcast, your one-stop auditory guide to achieving your CRNA dreams. The key benefits and features of this private podcast will be hearing directly from the experts, listen to seasoned CRNA faculty members who know the admissions process inside and out, get invaluable insights not found in brochures or websites, you're going to hear from behind the scenes and discover the lesser known details of the selection process, traits that faculty look for in candidates, and the hidden pitfalls to avoid. Also knowing that all schools are a little unique, and this is going to give you that invaluable insight that's going to allow you to see the differences between different CRNA programs and the faculty that run these programs. You're going to hear real stories, hear from successful students who have been in your shoes, learn about their challenges and strategies, and what made them stand out. You're going to get strategic advice. So beyond grades, how, how can you learn to craft a compelling application, such as for your essay or your interview responses that really will resonate with the admissions teams? You're also going to get flexible learning. You can do listen to this podcast on your commute, during your workouts, or even while cooking. So we want this learning to fit your schedule. You're going to hear a lot of Q&As on these podcasts. These questions and answers are found in our private CSBA community. So again, we pick questions that are commonly asked um, from CSBA students and we bring them to the table uh, during this faculty podcast. So it's a great way to hear commonly asked questions from a variety of faculty and different insights on that. We also want you to stay up to date. The admissions landscape is always changing. So we wanna make sure that you're updated on the latest trends and requirements and strategies for success. And then last but not least, we wanna help you build confidence. Knowing what to expect and how to prepare can dramatically increase your confidence, giving you the edge during the application interview process. So I hope this sounds exciting to you. I hope you're as pumped as I am to tune into these shows. And remember, if you're a CSBA student, you're going to have access to this private podcast, but don't worry. We wanna make sure we're not excluding anyone from this podcast. And so on occasion, we're gonna share sneak peeks with you, our regular CSBA listeners, because again, I want everyone to succeed. And if you're, whether you're a CSB member for 12 months or for a short period of time, if you are a member, you're going to have access to the entire library of private CSBA faculty podcasts. So again, this is a really valuable resource that we are excited to bring to you today. And I want to just leave you with the conclusion that whether or not you're contemplating CRNA career or you're already deep in the application process, this Nurse Anesthesia Educators Unplugged is your secret weapon to equip yourself with the knowledge, strategies, and confidence to stand out. So I hope you enjoy the sneak peek. Let's go ahead and get into today's episode. One of my favorite terms is stretch goals. Um, I love that phrase because I really love the fact that when we talk about setting goals, our goals should be a little bit unrealistic, right? Or at least I think they should be. They should be in the fact, uh, you know, that they stretch us beyond our normal, make us do things that we weren't sure we could ever do. Obviously, I don't want to put any patient at safety. There's not, you know, that that we're looking at, but it's got to get us out of our comfort zone to grow because if not, then I stay who I am and that's just what it is. So I love as you talk about those stretch goals and that repetition. But what I really love you talking about right there, I'm going to be honest with you, is talking about using these skill sets and developing these skill sets not always in the hardest situations, but sometimes in those standard, generic, what we consider simple situations, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. when we're teaching students to intubate with bougies um, in the uh, anesthesia programs. We're not telling them, wait till you get the most difficult airway in the world and then try to use the bougie. We're telling them that on your simple airways, use the bougies, the glide scopes, the alternative devices so that you have a comfortability with them. And therefore, it's taking some of the stress out of it when you get to having to use it in a difficult emergency situation. It's already stressful. It's like in, you know, I'm thinking about it in the ICU settings for our listeners here. It's like that patient that is, you know, quote unquote, the walkie talkies or the more stable patients that are in our SCUs, those patients have a lot to offer. You may yeah. not be crashing and figuring out how to titrate Levo and Epi and Vaso and Angiotensin twos all at the same time, right? It may be that you're sitting there and you've got an arterial line and you've got a patient that's pretty stable and it's diving into the critical thinking of, okay, what all is this arterial line showing me? Or what all is going on with the ventilator and how do I understand what's going on with this ventilator better now that I have some downtime with a patient that's not. So we're not going to always learn just on that one patient or two patients or whatever that are the critically sick with a PA catheter, CRRT multiple vasoactive, you know, substances going on, we can learn with those simple ones. Oh, that that's absolutely true. You can take yourself out of your comfort zone with the simplest patient. There's always something more to learn. That's why I say remain curious and never be satisfied because there's always something more to learn. There is a a guy who wrote a couple of books on deliberate practice. Uh, His name's Daniel Coyle. And uh, he said a quote that that kind of resonated with me. And he said, there is a place right on the edge of your ability where you learn the best and the fastest. It's called the sweet spot. The underlying pattern is the same. Seek out ways to stretch yourself. Play on the edges of your competence. As Albert Einstein once said, one must develop an instinct for what one can just barely achieve through one's greatest efforts. And really the key word there is is barely. Constantly remain curious and keep reaching. Small incremental reaches are going to have a large outcome over time. And so with learning critical thinking, uh, one thing you, actually two things I, I think of that you have to be open to, can't be as scared of, um, or failure. Yep. And feedback from your colleagues. And when you become a, an anesthesia student, you will be getting that daily. And it, I mean, it's, it, you will be immersed in deliberate practice. And as a student, you, you deal with that and, and you should because that's part of the process. I mean, when, when you start your anesthesia journey and then you finish it, you will be a completely different person. You will think differently because of all the feedback, all the trials, all the learning, all the studying, all the hours in clinical, all the sleep deprivation, every experience you have, all of that will accumulate to make you into a CRNA and you will think differently. So it it, it really is a, a process and it's not something that, that is going to happen overnight. Good critical thinkers have been doing this for a long time. Hey, future CRNA, another daily dose of inspiration from a CRNA School Prep Academy student. After three years of applying and a lot of rejections, I finally got an acceptance letter to one of my top choice schools. Coming from a background of being told and treated like I'm not good enough for most of my life, the mental gymnastics I had to do was real. For the past three years, I have purposely been putting myself in a position to be told I'm not good enough. And I was told that many, many times. The difference is, since becoming a nurse, I know that I am good enough. My socioeconomical and educational background was not so great growing up, and nursing was my second career. When I was younger, I lacked confidence in my educational capabilities as a young adult, and it was not until I went back for nursing that I realized I could be smart enough. I wrecked my GPA when I was younger, so I had to work hard to correct it. I did that in nursing school with my BSN, but I had to be extra aware of what programs use the last 60 credits or nursing degree calculations. Despite having six years of ICU experience and 10 years overall, I had to return to the ICU to gain recent experience, which when you have a cushy IR cath lab position was no easy task. But I can say now that it was worth it. I'm going to do this and I cannot wait to get started. 
I would like to thank Sierra School Prep Academy and all the resources and support that is available. Thank you, Jenny and Richard, and everyone else for making our dreams a possibility. Start date, June of 2023, SRNA signing out. Congratulations, CSBA student. If you're listening, I know who you know who you are. I'm so incredibly proud of you. I know you've been at this for a long time. Um, so those of you listening to this story, if you can relate to the feelings of not being good enough, I hope this story hit home. And let me remind you that you are too capable of achieving your dream of becoming a CRNA. If you're not already signed up for our free future CRNA newsletter, be sure to do so now. Pause this episode and go click the link in the show notes in the comments below. Cheers to your future. I'm rooting for you. Now let's get back to the show. All right. So we have dove a lot into the aspect of how do we become a critical thinker in the ICU? What can they focus on? How do they develop those skill sets? Now let's dive into the academics of this, because this is what a lot of people could be interested in, too. Right. Because when we talk about admissions process and you and I just, you know, got through talking a lot about admissions process, what's the committee looking for when they ask these critical care or critical thinking type questions? What are they looking for from an applicant when they answer it? Yeah, I, I would say the simplest answer is they're looking for somebody who can verbalize how to apply concepts, how to apply knowledge into a clinical setting. And at least from my perspective, I'm not going to ask anything about anesthesia because the people we're interviewing, they haven't learned anesthesia yet. So that's not fair. But I think asking questions about the ICU is completely fair game because that's the environment that they work in. And we want to see that they can take the the different concepts of, of ICU or clinical ICU um, and, and that they can apply that into a setting, into a scenario or a question. So that's kind of where we're looking at. And there are, there are certain things that you can look for that will kind of key you into uh, a, an interview panel that is trying to evaluate your critical thought process. So if they're asking you, uh, questions with the words who, how, what, when, where. If they're asking you questions with these, then they're they're trying to get at statements that are asking for specific information and for you to apply the knowledge you have into that situation. And so that's why we always tell them also that, you know, we try to emphasize, especially within CSPA, that your preparation in critical thinking and your preparation for getting into anesthesia school begins on day one when you walk into the ICU oh, absolutely. and start, you know, working in the ICU because these admissions counselors, these admission uh, specialists uh, and, and panels are really going to be able to tell whether you just basically are repeating off the Google answer you found last night before you went to bed uh, before your interview, right? And you were studying it versus the fact of that you have that knowledge and are able to actually apply it within the settings that you are in within your ICUs. There's a big difference between those two. There is a big difference. And and also realize that interview panels, they they have heard everything <laughs> and and they've heard the same thing over and over and over. So if you can tailor it to your specific experience, that's going to stand out. And if you can apply the knowledge that you've learned to your to to you as a person, that will definitely stand out. And that's what we want to see. So a couple of examples. You got some? Yeah. So here here's a couple of questions that are typical critical thinking uh, type questions. So when was a time that you learned something new about critical care? And how did you apply that knowledge into your clinical practice? That's a very general question. You see the when, you see the how, you see how did you apply that. So what we want to hear is that you take some piece of information that you either read about in a journal or you read about it online, or maybe you were discussing it with some colleagues. And then maybe there was a situation where you were able to apply that particular piece of knowledge into a clinical setting. So here's an example. Um, you learned about levofed and about titrating it and the, the different times to titrate it. So pick an experience of when a, a patient came in who was severely hypotensive and the levofed was the, was the vasoactive drug that was being used in order to manage that hypotension. And then talk about how 
you think that that would help the patient or how maybe even the addition of another vasoactive medication would be helpful and how you would go about approaching the ICU attending and potentially adding that other vasoactive medication. So there are a variety of ways that you can answer that question, Um, but you want to definitely make it personal to you and to the experiences that you've had in the ICU. All right. Well, that sums up today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys found that so valuable. And I look forward to, again, sharing some more uh, golden nuggets with you guys in the future. Um, Again, if you're a CSBA member, there will be an entire section inside the academy that's labeled Nurse Anesthesia Educators Unplugged Podcast. It will be um, inside the membership. So again, you log into your membership to have access to this. Again, you can play this on audio um, whenever you are driving or cooking or folding laundry, whatever, whatever fits your learning style. Again, we hope you guys find a lot of value in these episodes and we're excited for future episodes to share with you. And until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, Please be sure to share um, that if CSB podcast has been helpful for you in your journey journey, I would so very much appreciate it if you were able to share um, this valuable uh, podcast with others that you know who are embarking on their CRNA journey. I call it pain it forward. So again, if this has been a valuable resource for you, a valuable tool on your own CRNA journey, I would so greatly appreciate it if you were able to share it with someone else down the, down the road, even if you don't know anyone right now, um, keep us in mind to make sure you send people our way, because again, we want to help you find success. We want to help your, your peers find success. So cheers to your future. And thank you so much. And until next time, take care. Hey, future CRNA, as always, I appreciate you and your loyalty. Thank you so very much for tuning in this week. I'd love to hear from you. So screenshot this episode and share it to your IG stories with your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to tag me at CRNA School Prep Academy so I can personally thank you. Be sure to head over to CRNAschoolPrepAcademy.com to check out our blog and gather free resources to help you along your CRNA journey. Stay strong and I'll see you next week.